And now, coming to you live from Huntsville Athletic Studios, it's Pop Culture Philosophers. And here are your hosts, Brockin, Robbie Billups, and John Hammertime Horseshoe. Hey everybody, it's the Pop Culture Philosophers, coming to you always live from the Huntsville Attic in beautiful Huntsville, Alabama. Today we're talking about Christmas. That's right, it's our Christmas special. We're talking about all things Christmas and pop culture, from movies, the TV specials, to music. I'm, of course, John Hammertime Old Shoe. <laughs> I almost forgot who I was. And with me always, Rockin' Robbie Billups. Hey, everybody. Merry Christmas, John. Happy Hanukkah. Happy holidays. Merry, uh, happy Kwanzaa and all that. Absolutely. Yeah, back at you, man. <clears throat> Merry Solstice. Happy Yule. All those good things, man. I'm very happy to be here. I love doing Christmas specials. I love doing I love doing specials, guys. Podcasting is fun, but when you do those specials, something in between the, the regular episodes out of the norm, maybe. I don't know. I love I love these things. You guys have been on some of these with us, I'm sure, in the past. Dude, Christmas time is the second most wonderful time of the year. Wouldn't you say, John? Oh, you're biased to Halloween still, aren't you? Uh, absolutely. But otherwise, that's really cool. With us tonight, we have some uh, great guests. Happy to have you here. To share our hearth and home with us and burn a Yule log, we have with us Justin Goldsmith. You don't have a fireplace here. We can still burn shit. Yeah, you know, and yeah, we can still burn stuff. And Netflix has <laughs> the the Yule log video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. it's extra crackly this year because oh. it's birch wood. Oh, birch wood, neat. Yeah, maybe we'll get to it on a future <laughs> wonderful world of wood. Yeah. Also Dude. with us, Drew Matson, everybody. You know, that was actually one of my traditions is my father would always put on that Yule log. We couldn't start unwrapping stuff without the Yule log. <laughs> couldn't start unwrapping stuff without the Yule log. Just sounds so weird, doesn't it, John? The real Yule log or the Netflix thing? <laughs> we, ha- we had a tape before Netflix. So we had a Are you serious? Really? Yes, I swear. I swear to God. <laughs> did, you, did you guys make it yourself? Like with a camera? Yeah. <laughs> no. What? We, we, recorded, oh. <laughs> we recorded off of, of uh, TV. Yeah. Well, that's not. I don't know if that's legal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about the history of Christmas because a lot of people, you know, they just, they just, I think they take Christmas for granted. They don't really know a lot about it. So Christmas is both a sacred religious holiday and a worldwide cultural and commercial phenomenon. For two millennia, people around the world have been observing it with traditions and practices that are both religious and secular in nature. Christians celebrate Christmas Day as the anniversary of the birth of Jesus of Nazareth, a spiritual leader whose teachings form the basis of their relation, of their religion, of their relations and their religion. <laughs> <laughs> Centuries before the, uh, the arrival of Jesus, people celebrated light and birth in the darkest days of the winter during the solstice. It's the longest night of the year. This event signifies the returning sun and longer days. In Scandinavia, the Norse celebrated Yule on December 21st, the winter solstice, through all the way through to January. In recognition of the return of the sun, fathers and sons would bring home large logs and they would set them on fire. And the people would feast until the log burned out, which usually take almost all the way up to like 12 days. In Germany, people honored Odin during the midwinter holiday. And Germans were terrified of Odin, believe it or not. And they believed that he made these, these nighttime flights through the sky to watch everybody and then decide who would prosper or perish. In Rome where the winters weren't quite as harsh. The celebration of Saturn, the god of agriculture, was celebrated in a festival called Saturnalia. Saturnalia was a hedonistic time when food and drink were plentiful and the Norman Roman social order was turned upside down. For a month, slaves would become masters, peasants were in command of the city, businesses and schools were closed so that everyone could join in on the fun. You say for a whole month? For like Yeah, a whole month, an entire month. Members of the upper classes, though, often celebrated the birthday of Mithra, Mithra was the god of the unconquerable sun. On December 25th, it was believed that Mithra, an infant god, was born on a rock. Of a rock. Not on a rock, but of a rock. In Iraq. The rock. Fraggle rock. (laughs) For some Romans, Mithra's birthday was the most sacred day of the year. Now, in the 4th century, Pope Julius I chose December 25th as the official celebration of the birth of Jesus. And by holding Christmas at the same time as the traditional winter solstice festivals, church leaders increased the chances that Christmas would be properly embraced. And the practice then spread spread throughout all of Europe. Now, the early American colonists did not celebrate Christmas. You know, they viewed it as an English custom, and they weren't down with that. In fact, the celebration of Christmas was actually outlawed in Boston 
from 1659 to 1681. But as Americans began to embrace Christmas in the 19th century as a perfect family holiday, old customs were unearthed, and people looked toward recent immigrants and Catholic and Episcopalian churches to see how the day should actually be celebrated. And in the next 100 years, Americans built a Christmas tradition all of their own that includes many pieces of other customs, including decorating trees, sending holiday cards, and gift giving. Speaking of traditions, I would like to know, everybody here, if you have a Christmas tradition. I think most people do the, hey, let's open the presents Christmas Day thing. But maybe there's something else you guys do a little different or you uh, maybe you celebrate a different day or you have, I don't know, maybe you get around and jerk each other off waiting to flick. Let's cut that part <laughs> out. <laughs> I mean, what Why have you been in my house? <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you guys normally do? Drew, I'll start with you. Is there something you guys normally do as a family the routine. or with your friends? It's more with my family. Christmas with us is more of a family thing. Uh, it's always, we have to, Christmas, of course, you're very excited for presents, kids are, but we cannot open presents until my dad wakes up. And my dad sleeps until like 10 or 11 on the weekends, like at least. So me, I've never woken up on time for school and, and it's like wake up at eight o'clock in the morning, just like, just waiting. And as soon as he wakes up, we get to go down. We have a uh, French toast bake. And then for. Oh, so you do a breakfast before you do it. We do, do a it. breakfast before we before you do that. And then uh, for, for Christmas dinner, it's always like a standing rib roast. My mom balls it out. It sounds on like Christmas. delicious. The yeah. whole day sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, my mom balls out on Christmas. She does a great job. Awesome, man. So you do the do a be- breakfast, then you guys do a gift exchange, I'm assuming, after that. Oh, yeah. we One, one designated gift giver just sits at the tree and just hands out all the Oh, presents. yeah. Somebody plays Santa's little helper kind of thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Somebody has to be that dog, apparently, from <laughs> The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. Robbie, do you have any uh, cr- traditional uh, things you do on Christmas? Um, this is going to be an odd Christmas for me because most of my actual Christmas Day traditions have always involved going to one of my grandmother's houses. And now, unfortunately, this is the first year where both of my grandmothers will not be here. So I don't really know. It's time to make a new holiday tradition. I'm going to do something like I did on Thanksgiving and make a vegetarian feast for me and my lady. And what we typically do, though, is her family and my family do this thing on Christmas Eve, right? And so, I don't know, you know Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but I love opening up presents on Christmas morning. That's the best part of Christmas to me. And secondly, the food. Oh, yeah. So, gift, the gifts and, and all that stuff, I, I, that, that, that to me is Christmas and family. Of course, it's being with people that you care about, that you love. That's true. Getting just getting together with either you know f- friends or family who you care about, and just uh, not even yeah. just the gifts, just being together. Another good favorite tradition of mine. I don't really do it a lot anymore, but back in the day, the the Christmas night bar hop was always very fun to me. Like everybody's in town from college or just in town, back in town to see their family. So you see all these old friends. Everybody's out at the bars. It's just a good fun time to have a cup of cheer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Goldsmith, what do you normally do? Is there a tradition you or family does, your, you and your friends? My, my mom's side of the family, uh, it's always the second Saturday in December. So that it's just you know when it is. That nobody has to plan around it or anything like that. You can look in January and be like, okay, that's when the Christmas party's going to be. That and uh, Eggnog Man. Eggnog Man? Was he a superhero? Yeah. Eggnog <laughs> Man? Eggnog, eggnog Man. man. But, uh, it, yeah, we're it, drinking Eggnog. Yeah. Hey. Yes. yes. It's delicious. And it's the only time of year... You, it's around for some reason. It became a holiday thing at some point. Yeah. I'll get into that later. You think people try to market, but like, let's bring this back out for Easter, and like, no one's buying it. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> probably tried it. to bring it back. <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> yeah. so but you're not looking it. for it. Yeah. Um. So, okay, that's cool. So you get together with the, the mom's family. Always the second Saturday, you said? Yeah, the second Saturday So sometimes it's really well before Christmas then. Yeah. Okay. So did you already, today is like Saturday, today, recording today, on. You already had your gift yeah, exchange it, it today? Was, Literally, it was earlier today, yeah. Did you get anything really awesome? Did you get any we G.I. Do, Joe's? Oh, this, we do an actual like tradition thing that we other than the get-together is uh, we always play bingo. And we do like a dirty bingo. That's kind of like Dirty Santa. But uh, when you get a bingo, you can either steal somebody's thing that they won and unwrapped. Or you can unwrap a new one. Huh, well, that sounds really dumb. It's fun. But most people don't know this, but... Goldsmith is a senior citizen, so of course he's going to do <laughs> I got a 25- Him and his whole family. Play that Christmas bingo. I got a $25 dirty. gift card to Walmart and uh, some game and a puzzle. So that, the, yeah, that, that's pretty dope. The gifts that's, vary. Yeah. So it does sound like a senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the new cane. Um, yeah, mine's similar. You know, the gift exchange. We also do, uh, in the morning, we get together with family and we do a big breakfast. And then we do uh, uh, a present exchange. 
And then we some we used to, and this doesn't happen as much because it's hard to always get together on Christmas Eve. We used to always do one present on Christmas Eve. Just get that one. It's usually like fucking socks or something. I'm like, why do we bother with this? <laughs> I'm not going to let you open your big present on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Wow. If, Super Nintendo. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> I have no reason to wake up in the morning. The other thing, though, is we also... I still get shit from my family for this. They also share Papa Smurf stories. I'll backtrack this a little bit because I think I've shared it with Robbie. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I was little as shit, man. This is the 80s. I was a little kid. My mom took me to the mall. Gave me like $5. And it was a couple of days before Christmas. She's like, okay, buy something for somebody you love. So I bought myself a Papa Smurf doll. <laughs> In my defense, it was a really good deal. Okay? I couldn't pass this up. Even at that age. Yeah. Looking out for the And deals. I was a little kid, man. <laughs> and uh, so now, when anybody in the family does any Christmas shopping between like Thanksgiving and Christmas, because you're supposed to be out Christmas shopping. So if you buy yourself something, they call you Papa Smurfing. So they always do that. Like, did you Papa Smurf? Like, I bought these shoes. Etc. So they I still think, give me I think shit for that. Oh, actually, you're right, though. One of my favorite holiday traditions is buying a gift for myself. It's not my fault all the good deals are on Black Friday. <laughs> yeah. Another one of my favorite holiday traditions is listening to Christmas music, guys. And I think let's well, let's talk about Christmas music. Um, Anybody who knows me knows I just adore Christmas music. And I'm going to ask you guys, what are your favorite Christmas songs? And in particular, like the version of the song you like. And and feel free to say as many as you want up to five, because five's a good number. Joe DiMaggio's number. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to start with Dashing, Drew. Your favorite Christmas songs, buddy? Uh, let's see. Uh, I love Oh Come All Ye Faithful. Uh, one of my favorite versions is actually Twisted Sisters' version. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And that's because the music video is hilarious because it just continues their trend of wacky videos. Uh <laughs> the Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas is You. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. A, po- a oh, pop yeah. hit <laughs> in its own right. Uh, and then it's very Trans-Siberian Orchestra heavy. Oh, of course. I, I have uh, Wizards in Winter, uh, Christmas Eve slash Sarajevo, and A Mad Russian's Christmas. Oh, nice. Dude, they're, they are amazing. I've, I've seen them once before. They're, they're incredible. I envy you. They're, they're fantastic artists. They, they do great Christmas music. Like, just, just so epic and cool. Mm-hmm. Speaking of epic and cool, Justin, what are your favorite Christmas songs? Hey, probably, I'd love uh, Have Yourself a Merry mm-hmm. Little Christmas. That's like a great one. The Bing Crosby version. Yeah, I was going to say course. that's probably the most yeah. famous version. Uh, either that or um, the from John Williams' song from Home Alone. Okay. Uh, like a song. The the. Uh, it was one that he wrote somewhere in my memory. Okay. Na, 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 yeah. Na, that. That beautiful song, song actually. I, I can't think of Christmas without thinking about that song. And it's it's the whole Home Alone soundtrack kind of is, that soundtrack is the soundtrack of Christmas to me. Nice. Yeah. No, good answers, good answers. John, what are your favorite Christmas songs, buddy? I'm going to say, let's see, a couple of them here that stand out. Wham, Last Christmas. No doubt, no doubt. Great song. Yeah. I like No Doubt. I don't know if they have a Christmas song, but they're also great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Last Christmas, great song. Great, great song. song. Uh, Weezer has one called The Christmas Song. They have a couple they wrote that are not covers. The Christmas Song is, is amazing. It's a very sad song, so it's hard to listen to if you're you know lonely. And then, of course, the most popular entertainer of all time, Paul McCartney, Wonderful Christmas Time. Everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful Christmas <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah. That's a great song, dude. It's a great song. By Paul. Sir Paul McCartney. Sir Paul McCartney. Dude, that's a great list. Uh I got mine here. Um, I, I love a lot, dudes. I really do. Uh, first of all, Sleigh Ride, song by TLC. It's really good. It's actually something that I forgot about for a very long time and recently have rediscovered. Burl Ives, Have a Holly Jolly Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love that song. That's Cup good. of Cheers, one of my favorite terms to use during Christmas time. <clears throat> oh, Holy Night, pretty much any version of that song. Yep. Yeah. But the... Uh, What's that acapella group? The Pentatonix? Yeah, Pentatonix. Yeah, Pentatonix. They got a great version of that, but even the Celine Dion version is good of that. Like, I just love that song. It gives me chills when they're like, fall on your knees. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Happy good. Xmas, War is Over by John Lennon. Great song. Great song. Great song. Christmas in Dixie by Alabama <laughs> hey. is a regional favorite of mine. And my absolute favorite Christmas song ever is Three Kings and God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. It's a tie. And how perfect was it that Bare Naked Ladies and Sarah McLaughlin did a mashup of the two songs into one. My favorite Christmas song ever. Love it. Super groovy and, and just love it. Huh. Love that song. So we talked about our favorite songs, but 
and not to retread, but who your favorite artist doing doing songs? A lot of these aren't into you know. There's a lot of great like look at uh, James Taylor does Christmas songs, but they're not original. They're covers. Yeah. So there's a lot of great artists out there who do the quintessential the classic, Christmas. Yeah, artists. the classic Christmas stuff. So is there a particular artist that stands out or you really appreciate, really love there, Drew? I. It- it, yeah, you're right. It feels like everybody on Earth, every artist on Earth, does a Christmas album eventually. Like you said, even Weezer, yeah. <laughs> they, they uh, everyone does one. But the one that stands out to me is definitely Trans Siberian Orchestra, just because I've listened to that for years, and I actually got to see them and during a dark point in my life and when a few years ago when i was uh, handicapped couldn't walk for nine nine ten months and i got to see them during christmas and i actually just felt hopeful oh like, you actually I, got to see them where'd you yeah, see them here in uh, we saw them in or? uh birmingham at, oh awesome a, yeah uh, bjcc and i i loved it man it was great yeah they sound like they they would just sound amazing live absolutely Seems, I, i'm happy they didn't let you down be like oh these some bands don't sound good live. You know, some of those, but like rock, rock bands, some rock oh, yeah. bands, would be disappointing if they didn't sound good live. <laughs> the only disappointing part was when my dad yelled Freebird. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, we're disappointing that they covered it. Welcome is- to Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Robbie? Is there a particular uh, uh, two? Artist? I would say two artists in particular are my all-time favorite, just Christmas artists. Like, I can trust anything by these two artists. They're very similar, but one's very old school and one is new school, but very old school. I'm so confused by that statement. Michael Bublé and Frank Sinatra. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I think I, you, I think you can't go wrong with those two. And oh, yeah. They're, they're, oh, there's wise. so many people that do Christmas music, you know, like Bobby Darin, Bing Crosby. I love that stuff, but like those two guys, I trust them every time. Any any Christmas song by those two, Bublé or Sinatra, I'm down. Goldie Smith, what are you thinking? I don't think that... What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I don't no, think just that tell there, us your thoughts. <laughs> I, I, I don't uh, think that there can be another answer other than the best-selling recording artist of the 20th century selling over one billion records, tapes, and other things, Bing Crosby. Bing, okay. He's got, I mean, like... Bing's great. It, yeah. Pretty much any Christmas song you can think of, he recorded back then. And what about Little Drummer Boy that he did on TV with David Bowie? It's oh, awkward. shit. It's yeah. one of the most awkward It is awkward, ever. though. I've never seen that. You've never seen that? You to, should watch that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Bing Crosby probably had no clue who David exactly. Bowie was. <laughs> They're not alike at all, so it was a very odd sight. <laughs> but it was good, because yeah. David Bowie does a peace on earth. It's really good. It's a good song, too, yeah. Little Drummer yeah. They're both some of the most you know talented musicians ever singers the vocals but then those two together it was awesome yeah, but you're I, right the video was really awkward especially he doesn't like who's <laughs> this weird looking guy because he's you know bowie was linky and he had the long he was wearing hair. a very nice suit but yeah. he was wearing a lot of makeup yeah well many times he did but so was bing yeah that just that blew my mind just i saw didn't know that until about 45 seconds ago that he sold over 1 billion records tapes and cds Makes a lot of sense. White Christmas, guys, right? Yeah. 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 What about you, John? I'm going to say, uh, throw a curveball in the mix. My favorite, so I listen to a bunch. So Bing Crosby, uh, Frank Sinatra, there's a bunch. But one that I really love is actually an album by somebody who's actually an atheist, who used to be a Catholic. Seth MacFarlane has a great Christmas album. And he um, does a great, he's got a great singing voice, man. He's amazing. He also covers some old songs, you know, like uh, Frank Sinatra and Frank Sinatra Jr. and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, dude, the, his Seth MacFarlane all the way, man. Love uh, Seth MacFarlane. Well, we talked about some of our favorite songs, and one more I want to quick shout out: "Christmas and Hollis" from DMC. Mm. Oh yeah, oh, I, forgot, yeah. I actually forgot a lot of these songs. You forget about yeah, to hear until like, this Christmas. is a great Christmas song. Um, we talked about the artists. We talked about the songs. How about who has put together the quintessential, the perfect Christmas albums? Because, like you said, Drew. Almost everybody. I mean, it's like a rite of passage. Everybody does a Christmas album, even Twisted Sister. Yeah. You know, so like everybody's like got it's one. easy money. Yeah, right. I mean, Absolutely. why not? I'm a talented musician. December's coming up. Let's make that money. So who has the best albums? What are the best Christmas albums? Justin. Uh, I didn't do a lot of research on this one, so I'll just say like all of Bing Crosby stuff. Yeah, well, White <laughs> Christmas. White Christmas. Yeah, White is Christmas. Great all right, yeah. good, good show. Good all show. Right. What about you, John? What about you? That, man, like I said, that uh, Holiday for Swing by Seth MacFarlane. Also, the Weezer Christmas. Which was really, it's Christmas with Weezer. It was really a thing done for iTunes. So it's not an official album, but they have two original songs, which I've had for a while, and then they cover all the classics. What about you, Drew? I mean, I, I've been on them all day. I know uh, what you're saying. <laughs> Trans Siberian Orchestra, Christmas Eve, and other stories. Okay. It's like, it tells a great story. And the thing that I like about it, like the, a lot of their albums, yeah, they're Christmas themed, but they can tell an actual story about, uh, around the Christmas time. Very nice. I got a couple I want to mention here, real quick. Uh, first of all, very special Christmas. Started out in the late 80s. A lot of pop stars getting together doing music. 
Um, it was a benefit to the Special Olympics. They kept doing that. Eventually, no doubt was on there with Oi to the World and all that stuff, right? That's good stuff. Um, Elvis, Elvis's Christmas album is great. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the Motown Christmas. Oh, yeah. That's a great album. But yeah. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with Sinatra. A jolly, it's like a jolly Christmas with Frank Sinatra. And then the, the, the Buble one. You know, the big blue, yeah, yeah. The big blue blade blade one. <laughs> it's good stuff, man. Christmas music is good. And I think now I'm inspired to go refill my eggnog and listen to some Christmas music. Maybe Christmas and Dixie or Mary Did You Know, something like that. Maybe the Kenny Rogers, Winona Judd, Mary Did You Know. I fe- I'm feeling a Dixie Christmas tonight, guys. Anyway, we're going to be right back, guys. We're going to take this eggnog break. Hope you come back with us here on Pop Culture Philosophers. Hey everybody, it's John Hammertime Holshue from the Pop Culture Philosophers, letting you know that we're going to be at the Huntsville Comic and Pop Culture Expo, March 18th and 19th, at the Von Braun Center's North Hall in Huntsville, Alabama. There's over 23,000 square feet, and they're going to have artists and writers and door prizes and a gaming session and a panel and a kids area. Tons of artists and writers are going to be there, including the legendary Chris Claremont. That's right, X-Men's Chris Claremont. He gave us Stage Refuser Pass. He gave us Gambit. How awesome they're gonna, it's going to be to have him there at the show. And of course, we're going to be there as well. We're going to have a booth. Swing on by. Come by and chat. Talk about pop culture. We're always uh, down to listen to people talk about pop culture and just shoot the, shoot the shit with you. So that's March 18th and 19th at the Von Braun Center's North Hall in beautiful Huntsville, Alabama. Come on down. It's the Huntsville Comic and Pop Culture Expo. Welcome back to the Pop Culture Philosophers We're talking about Christmas. It's the Christmas special. And what else would Christmas be without giving and receiving awesome gifts? So we're going to be talking about our favorite gifts received and given. I'm going to start with Drew and go counter cockwise, as we said in the last podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, famous, uh, famous, <laughs> could be famous. They could be famous. Favorite gifts you've uh, given and or received? <laughs> Sounds like a sex question, too, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope not. Uh, <laughs> my favorite uh, gift that I've given is uh, people who know me know that my favorite uh, musical is Les Miserables. And I, it became that way because my mother had the soundtrack playing in her car like all the time. The 20th anniversary soundtrack, the great one. Uh, and she lost it. And she had forgotten about it, forgot that she lost it. And a couple of years ago, I actually got her, like the full presentation, the full DVD, and and the soundtrack to give it to her, and she just started crying. She, I, I loved it. It was it, it sticks out in my mind. Very nice and received. Uh, it's partly uh, it, it pertains to my brother. All right, my dad, my dad and I got a uh, or my dad got a Christmas bonus, and so he let my brother and I pick consoles, like video game consoles, and I wanted the PS2. My brother wanted the GameCube. I got the PS2, and of course at this time, like PS2, it had been out for a little bit, so it had Metal Gear Solid 2, it had Final Fantasy 10, and my brother over there was like giving me the cold shoulder. He was looking back, and he's like. He looks at his like he's over there trying to play Pikmin, and he just keeps look, <laughs> looking o- looking over his shoulder, and just, just like guilty look on his face for getting that. <laughs> yeah, it just sticks out to me. Robbie, favorite gifts you received and or given? Uh, my favorite gifts given is every single one because okay. I love giving gifts to people. I love seeing that that I like you know I like it. But if I had to pick one, and maybe this isn't the best, but it's definitely the most memorable. Is early on in my high school career. I was, it was my first Dirty Santa. And I didn't really understand what Dirty Santa meant. I just meant, I thought it meant you just give someone a really shitty gift. I thought it was a sexual position. <laughs> yeah, right? So I gave them a used toothbrush and a left shoe. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> was that's it my Dirty Santa gift? <laughs> that is, wow. <laughs> wow, that's the most fucked up thing. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I thought that was the point. <laughs> I really did. Um, my favorite gift received is from my lady. Uh, I love reading and I love H.P. Lovecraft. Maybe not the best writer, but I love his ideas. I, I love his. I just. I think they're. I just love all that. You know, Cthulhu 
and just the whole Lovecraftian idea of horror. I love it. And my lady got me this really awesome complete works collection with this really cool embroidered Cthulhu on it. And it's, mm-hmm. it's gorgeous and I love it and treasure it today. I think I've seen that. Yeah. The one that you received. I think oh yeah. I saw. It's gorgeous. It was, yeah. yeah. It's really nice. Blue oh, and yeah. silver. And yeah. Oh, just yeah. a, just a nice, nice oh, I nice love gorgeous. it. It's fantastic. Goldsmith gift received or given. <laughs> Received uh, is probably a tie because the PS2 was a big thing for me as well. Uh-huh. I, I asked for it for like... Was this the same Christmas? For one year. I don't know. I don't remember what year it was. Me neither. I was in six... No. I asked for it in sixth grade. Did not get it. What assholes. <laughs> Got it in seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> My dad do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. It was... Uh, it's, it's either that or um, in fifth grade, I think, I got... A Packard Bell desktop computer. Holy <laughs> shit! A Jesus. Packard Bell. Yeah, because I had a bunch of old, uh, like I started messing around with computers when I was in the fourth grade, and I had some like old school DOS machines from like a bank, and uh, I wanted more. So the uh, one would hope they got me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like I had a the curiosity about it as a kid. So was that like Windows ninety five? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. That's that's a hell of a gift, man. What about Computer. you, John? A gift given. I didn't do my gift given. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I wasn't interested. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My bad. I had to. I I gave my parents. Uh, it was when I still lived with them. I think the last Christmas I lived there, I bought them uh, one of those Ronco sets of knives. The big. Right. Ronco makes knives. Yeah, I thought Ron- they made the food dehydrator and a bunch of other shit. Ronco Dude, makes they make a all lot of kitchen stuff. things. Okay. <laughs> including pasta and stuff. But uh, it set it and forget it. Like the big that goes with the knives. <laughs> <laughs> I got him the big wood block and all that, and I was I was all uh, excited about that because I didn't have a ton of money. But Are I, these I the knives that, that cut through good. a shoe? Or is that you, a different yeah, knife? yeah, it's that one. Now, did you buy blade. it from a, a TV infomercial though? No, I got them off Amazon. Oh, not not as exciting. <laughs> yeah, I well, hope they received. Had you called me. the one eight hundred number though, <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> I hope they got Robbie's Dirty Santa, the shoe with a toothbrush. <laughs> they used so they can brush. cut the shoe in half with their knife. <laughs> it was an old toothbrush that I eventually started using to clean my shoes. What about you, John, now that Justin is through? Um, <laughs> video game as well. When we were, we, were, <laughs> we, were, we were kids, and something my parents bought us, that we didn't even know what it was at the time. My mom heard about it, and she heard it was the big Christmas gift, and it was a lot of money, but she was going to buy it for us anyway. And we didn't even hear about it. I didn't hear about it until Christmas Day. I unwrapped it. I'm like, what is this? And apparently it was the big thing. It was called the Nintendo Entertainment System. Nice. I'm dating myself because this is in the 80s. But it was You're such a big... dating yourself? <laughs> That's not legal in Alabama, how old, home. How old I am. <laughs> um, so yeah, it came with Duck Hunt and it came with uh, Super Mario Brothers. Mario, yeah. And I had one of those. Dude, the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System changed my perception of the world. Yeah. To give is a... It was either last Christmas, maybe it was the Christmas before. I bought a Wii U and five games for my nes- my nieces, <laughs> my my nephews, your, nieces? <laughs> your Earthbounds, <laughs> for my nephews and my nieces. So what I did is I actually gave them each a game, and their their dad and and my sister in law, my sister, <laughs> not my sister in law. So I gave them each a game, and they unwrapped it, and they're like, "Wii U, like we don't have a Wii U." I'm like, "You do now," and I pulled out the Wii U. So they were really excited. Oh, that's uh, sweet. Yeah, I got them all. What a dick! <laughs> For a second, they were like, "Thanks, Uncle John." Yeah, we can't play this, you fucker. And then they threw it in the trash and punched our, me in the our dick. unksis. <laughs> so I like the Wii U, and they've loved it. You know, Mario Kart. There's a lot of great games on there. We're talking a lot about holiday traditions, gifts giving, and gifts giving. Gifts giving, you know, the best, <laughs> that, that's gonna the best, giving, the best giving. gift to get is the gift that gets, keeps on giving, right? The gifts the that Jelly gives. of the Month Club. Anyway, <laughs> one of my personal favorite holiday traditions is, especially being a kid, watching the TV specials on TV. <laughs> no, watching, watching all the stuff. And, and I'll start off, but like, first of all, I love pretty much all of the Rankin and Bass Christmas specials. We're talking about Santa Claus Comes to Town. The Year Without Santa Claus, Frosty, The Snowman, The Little Drummer Boy. Love all that stuff. But in particular, if I had to pick one, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Great. Oh, yeah. I love I love Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's that's, just, that's the one that's too uh, claymation, right? Yes. Oh, and so, yeah. so was Santa and Little Drummer Boy. Yeah, but this Frosty was a cartoon. Yeah, Frosty was a cartoon, which I always felt But it's gypped. the same company, right? It is the same company, but I always felt gypped by Frosty because it was just a... I like the animation. Yeah, but I really like the animation style they use. It yeah, works and, really and well. Dude, Rudolph has got 
Rudolph's got the annoying elf, but it's got the the oblivious Santa Claus, which I love. Who is a dick in there, by the way? He won't let they won't let Rudolph join because he's a little bit different, right? I mean, Rudolph's the most badass. Ru- I'm, I'm sorry. What are some of your favorite television specials? Those things that come along once a year, just a joy to watch. Brings back the childhood, the nostalgia. Justin, I gotta say, the Patrick Stewart Christmas Carol was a made-for-TV movie. Yes. So. Patrick and Stewart. it's a very good one. Patrick Stewart's f- fantastic. Yeah. As good old Ebenezer. Yeah. Or bad old Ebenezer. Yeah, that's that's definitely my favorite. What about you, Drew? My favorite, uh, Dr. Seuss is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Oh, yes. Because it was... The, it's, the cartoon one? Cartoon, the, not Jim Carrey, no. Okay. Uh, it's good, too. It's, uh, this one had uh, Boris Karloff. He was the Grinch. Yeah. And, and he is very heartwarming. He, his heart grew ten sizes that day. <laughs> it, I loved it. I watched it every year. Oh, the Grinch is great. And being narrated by Karloff, and I'm a big Universal Monster fan, so, yeah. Dude, the Grinch right up there. What about you, John? Speaking of Grinches... Was the was the Scrooge McDuck was that a made for TV or was that an actual standalone film? Because I watched it on TV as a kid. You talking about like Mickey's Christmas Carol? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's like twenty minutes long, so but it is something that's aired every year. So I would okay, count I that as a. That I would, I would count that. Yeah, that was my introduction too to to Scrooge McDuck. Everybody's. Yeah. And then he went on to you know have his own show. Oh, it's fantastic <laughs> stuff, man. I, it's, I really like that one. Scrooge and, uh, McDuck's one of my favorite characters. Period. Yeah, I remember the uh, the the Patrick Stewart one. What they should have done though at the end is that it's just it's, it's just a holodeck thing. The whole thing <laughs> just been fuck with people. And that and like you said, the, the Rudolph one is is probably the one I'm most fond of, and the one that that makes me think of Christmas. Before we get off of that, can I say how disappointed I was with Bill Murray's Christmas special last oh, year? Oh yeah, Murray yeah. Christmas. It had some funny moments in it, and some and a great cast too. Stuff. Yeah, but it was cool, but kind of it felt it, it, like it phoned it weak. in. <laughs> Speaking of television, besides the the Christmas specials, they also all our favorite shows do a Christmas episode. That's what I like. I look forward to those Christmas episodes. I love that uh, that you can go and watch your favorite show and. It makes me feel even more like Christmas. We get excited. Sometimes they air like a month beforehand, depending on the schedule. <laughs> yeah. Like we got to do like the, shit. They already did a Flash Christmas episode. So Drew, what do you do? You have some favorite episodes of uh, Christmas episodes of shows that stand out in your mind? Do you, do you enjoy? And you think maybe the listeners should check out? Actually, like the two that stand out in my mind are actually from the same TV show, and it's The West Wing. Uh, and it's the fir- the first two seasons. Their Christmas episodes were both great because in season one you had an actual Emmy award winning episode in In Excelsios Dio, which tells a story. It's mainly about Toby and he, a uh, homeless man dies. Homeless man dies in D.C., which isn't out of the ordinary. But he uh, the man's wearing a goodwill coat and had a, a card from Toby who worked at the White House. And he goes through all this, follow, it learns more about the guy, and he uses using the president's name, which is the big thing. He arranges a full military funeral, honor guard. Uh, he arranges a funeral for him, and the president says, and it's like he hears uses his name for that, which he's not supposed to do, and says, "Toby, if we don't, if we start pulling strings like this, don't you think every homeless veteran will come out of the woodwork?" And he says, "I can only hope so, sir." And it just really hit me. That's a great episode from a great show. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were gonna get deep. Like funny on us, and you went deep on us. You went the opposite nah. way. I mean, as as funny as some Christmas special TV shows are, like yeah, a lot of them are very heartwarming, yeah, and, and and they should be, man. This is a time where people are more receptive to that kind of energy, you know. And I think it's a good thing. Yeah, the other one that is uh, Noel, which is the next season, and it deals with uh, Josh Lyman's uh, post traumatic stress disorder, and he is talking to a therapist throughout the entire, and he. Uh, is broke his hand or broke his uh, hand on some glass, and at the end of the episode, he tells uh, Leo, his father figure, about it. And Leo tells him the story of a man in the hole. God's walking down the hole, and, and he gets stuck. He asks for help. The priest writes, or the priest writes him a prayer. Doctor writes him pre- prescription, and he says, "Hey, Joe." His friend walking by, and his friend jumps down in the hole, and he says, "Like, what are you doing, you idiot?" It's like you're st- now you're down here with me. Except Joe says, "Yeah, but I've been down here before, and I can show you the way out." And it's about, and it's just about your friends always being there for you. Yeah, I Very don't know. Funny. I don't know what that's like. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome for that job. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> That's one we're just going to edit all too, this. Drew. We're just going to edit all this out. Robbie, <laughs> are there particular uh, episodes of shows that oh, uh, stand yeah. out to you or you really enjoy? Yeah, I got a handful here I want to talk about. First of all, Arrested Development. 
Afternoon Delight. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah. With the Christmas office party. A little misunderstanding of that song, I think. Yeah, yeah. That that whole karaoke thing is super funny. <laughs> and Job at the Christmas party. If you haven't seen it, I'm sorry. Um, if anybody's familiar with the YouTube show Good Mythical Morning, they do these things called Will It, where they want to know if things will. And for instance, like, will this make a smoothie? And they'll be like, Beach, does it make a smoothie? And they'll get sand and suntan lotion and and shrimp an and just them. it's super fun. But they did a Christmas one called Will It Eggnog, which is appropriate because we're all drinking eggnog. And they did and oh. the ultimate one of that was the blood nog. They That's- made. They made eggnog, but with blood. I think we watched that milk. last year. Yeah. I yeah. think I made you guys. Dude, it's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. Good Mythical Morning's great, dude. There's one, they're huge YouTube guys, and uh, they're really awesome. Um, two more real quick. Seinfeld, The Strike. That's the Festivus episode. Oh, Festivus for the rest of us. Uh, yeah. And great episode. The Simpsons. Simpsons roasting on an open fire. Mm. That is such a great episode. It is heartfelt. It is funny. And it's, I think it's the very first episode of The Simpsons. Yeah, number number one. Number one, and it's mm-hmm. its great. It's where their cat dies. Yeah. Snowball, <laughs> Snowball, and they have to get Snowball, Snowball too. too. Yeah, it's it's fantastic, and it's great. Goldsmith, are there any particular episodes that stand out or you want to share with the listeners of any shows you really enjoy? And I, for some reason, I feel that uh, that Scott Bakula, Star Trek, is going to be on there for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh they do mention a few times during Star Trek. They don't have like Christmas episodes, but they like there's an original series episode where somebody mentions that uh, Kirk and this uh, this girl on the ship hooked up after the science lab Christmas party. <laughs> and then there's like some of the Hollow Sweet episodes, uh, or one of the Hollow Sweet episodes in Next Generation where Data's Scrooge doing the Christmas Carol stuff. But um, no, none of that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Get that Drew, shit out the, of the way. <laughs> the, the West Wing episodes that Drew was talking about are. Probably the best. Um, I also really like the the Futurama with the the robot Santa Claus. Oh yeah, <laughs> the, <laughs> I think it's Xmas. Yeah, yeah, he's evil. Yeah, the evil Claus. Yeah, yeah. The people it's, hide from him. <laughs> yeah, just that one's hilarious. I love the um, the. I don't watch a ton of the Office, but the there's an Office Christmas party one that's really funny. Yeah, there's a couple good Office. Christmas party yeah. ones. I think every season they did a Christmas party episode <clears throat> or a I, Christmas episode. I think aside from uh, the uh, the West Wing ones, my favorite is probably got to be Luda Christmas from uh, Thirty Rock. That show, <laughs> I just watched it earlier this year, and that show is so so funny. Alec Baldwin is Jack Donaghy. Oh, it's so great. They they mentioned this this photo shredder that's also a scanner. And you have to switch and uh, switch back and forth to change functions. That sounds like a terrible <laughs> so idea. Like people keep shredding important documents, so <laughs> they're getting sued. Um, also, something I just thought about: there was a Christmas episode of SNL with Alec Baldwin. There yes, was there episode was. Where we did the chocolate sweaty balls. Yes, <laughs> sweaty balls. <laughs> that, that was that was good too. Speaking of sweaty balls, John, what about you, man? I want to know. <laughs> what a transition! <laughs> so we talked about The Simpsons already. We talked about. Seinfeld Festivus. We steal all of your yeah. your, boy, your choices. Um, we didn't talk about... Did you we like the about, Roseanne, right? Did we talk about Elaine's Christmas sweater? No. Remember the Christmas sweater? I gotta yeah. get that. I said that to my nephew. Whatever. <laughs> I gotta get those. But, and then, uh, of course, we were talking about The Office. There's 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 a couple that come to mind. There's uh, uh, Classy Christmas, where they're trying to be classy because uh, S- uh, Steve Carell's lady's back in town. He just want to have a regular Christmas. He wants to do it classy. And then there's Secret Santa. That one's a great episode because... Uh, somebody else in the office dresses like Santa, even though Steve Carell thought he was going to dress Santa, so he's mad. So he reverses <laughs> his outfit, and he becomes Jesus. He's like, I'm Jesus, and he's better than Santa. And he's trying to <laughs> steal everybody's thunder. <laughs> Jesus, he's like, those that can trump Santa is Jesus. But uh, I think a lot of the great, a lot of shows have a great Christmas episode, either funny or heartwarming or both. And I just, I th- love the Christmas episodes in general. I love the Christmas episodes all season long. So they can play the Christmas episodes anytime. I like the Christmas reruns. So love the Christmas episodes. Well, if you've been listening, you know it is with beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are drinking eggnog. Hey, glug glug. Yeah, and and I'm rather enjoying this, guys. I really am. I've been. I don't want to drink too much eggnog, so I've been really putting a lot of rum in this. <laughs> I sort of did the same thing, except Goldsmith put too much rum in mine. So it was oh. sort of the same thing. Well, you, one you, of those you friend had, things I'm doing for you. You had Goldsmith make your drink. I didn't tell him to Mistake put rum. I didn't one. actually have him make it. I turned away. 
That was my fault. Turn my back and my drink. Speaking of goldsmith and alcohol, tell us a little bit about the history of eggnog, sir. Eggnog, historically also known when alcoholic as milk punch or egg milk punch. <laughs> egg milk punch. <laughs> that doesn't sound near as cool. It, it doesn't. No, it sounds all. terrible. I see. I like nog better. <laughs> Drew, Drew has collected more eggnog, by the way, on his beard. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right. Uh, the origins, etymology, and ingredients used to make the original eggnog drink are debated. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, nog was, quote, a kind of strong beer brewed in East Anglia. Alternatively, nog may stem from noggin, a Middle English term for a small wooden mug used to serve alcohol. That makes the most sense, actually. <laughs> However, the British drink Shit. was also called <laughs> the British drink was also called an egg flip, from the practice of flipping or rapidly pouring the mixture between two pitchers to mix it. Mm, very interesting. So, if you go to England, order an egg flip and see what happens. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, Bloody hell. <laughs> you get punched in the face. <laughs> One dictionary lists the word as being an Americanism invented in 1765 or so when Babson College professor Frigless Douglas Opie wrote that the term is a combination of two colonial slang words. Rum was referred to as a grog and bartenders served it in a small wooden mug called a noggin. The drink first became known as an egg and grog and later <laughs> as eggnog. Very nice. Eggnog yeah. sounds way better than egg and grog. Yeah. This, uh, they also mentioned that that theory is lacking proof. Uh, and <laughs> She's the wasting term, her fucking time. <laughs> I'm just, that's one of the theories. Uh, he also said says, it was debated. He also says that the term nog may be related to, quote, the Scottish term nug or nugged ale, meaning ale warmed with a hot poker, which is also very interesting. Very interesting. And what exactly is eggnog? Yeah, what's in it exactly? I know it's got, I'm assuming it's got eggs. <laughs> eggs and I, I know nutmeg is in there. Yeah, milk, I'm assuming. Well, traditional eggnog is made of milk or cream, sugar, raw eggs, an alcoholic spirit, and spices, often vanilla or nutmeg. In some recipes, vanilla flavor is added. Some modern commercial eggnogs add gelatin and other thickeners with less cream and egg. Cheap because they're cheap. That's what it is. <laughs> Very interesting. Thank you so much for that enlightening presentation on eggnog. It's funny that you say enlightening because eggnog is pretty heavy drink. Yeah, it is. And yeah. speaking of which, let's get heavy, guys. Hey. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. All that stuff. Kwanzaa. Habaragani, John. Habaragani. I don't even know what that is. Is that like the Japanese Christmas? It's the Kwanzaa dr- greeting, man. Oh, I don't know. Come on. I'm sorry. <laughs> get, gotta, co- get culture, homie. more PC. I got to say, when I was younger, I really didn't like eggnog, but I'm getting older and probably probably the rum helps. But <laughs> 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 but, uh, but I like it more now as I'm older. Yeah, I mentioned I'm, it I'm, earlier. It's one of my favorite things about Christmas time. Yeah, I, I like the cider that we typically have, John, during the fall time. Yeah, we stuff. usually make a cinnamon cider. But, dude, rum. the eggnog is so good. So it's good. delicious. Now, it's commercial. You know, it's, it's commercial. commercial. We uh, we don't make it ourselves, but I love eggnog, and we hope you do. In fact, go get you some eggnog or another cup of cheer, because we're about to go do it, and we're about to take a break, and we'll be right back here with our top five favorite Christmas movies of all time here on Pop Culture Philosophers. Hey everybody, Rockin' Robbie here. I want to talk to you real quick about Rockin' with Rockin' Robbie. That's right, it's my own show. We started about four years ago. We've been a little bit on a hiatus here and there, but Rockin' with Rockin' Robbie returns. It's returning very, very soon with our all-new episode, The Wonderful World of Wood. That's right. What could it be? What would it be? Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking us out. And remember, Rockin' with Rockin' Robbie is exclusive to YouTube. So join us for The Wonderful World of Wood on the next Rockin' with Rockin' Robbie, only on the Pop Culture Philosophers YouTube channel. Welcome back to Pop Culture Philosophers. Earlier we were talking about our favorite traditions. 
And what's more of a tradition than a Christmas tree? Well, I guess uh, unless you're Jewish, you don't have a Christmas tree and you have a Yule log or whatever. But but most of us have a Christmas tree. We love Christmas trees. And I'm dying to learn about the history of the Christmas tree. And I think Drew has some information to share with us. Yeah, evergreens have been used as a symbol of the sun, of life, uh, life triumphing over darkness and winter for a long time, Egyptians, Chinese, uh, northern Northern Europe. But it was especially popular among Vikings uh, and, um, and Gallic tribes and Germanic tribes for years. And what, and around the world, though, trees weren't seen as the main thing to do. And especially as Christianity became on the rise, uh, it was so sacred. And these were viewed as pagan, pagan rituals. And until, I think, they were, they were kind of like kept in hushed in the corner uh, amongst Protestants in Germany. But the thing that really did it uh, around the world was Queen Victoria. Now, her uh, German husband, uh, Albert, uh, he or she said, I want you to decorate a tree like you did in Germany. And because you clearly love it, you always talk about it. I want you to do it here at the, at, uh, at Windsor. And they, uh, he's like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, this is a joke, right? <laughs> and, uh, they were sketched in the illustrated London news standing with their children around a Christmas tree. And unlike the Royal family for years, Victoria was very popular and it took off around the world. Uh, in, in North America, especially in like Massachusetts, normally Puritan, very sacred. It was against the law in Massachusetts to hang pagan, uh, uh, things like that. And after Victoria did it, we had a lot more German and Irish immigrants and that just took off. And then, uh, it was an American, uh, trying to remember the name. He was an associate of Thomas Edison who invited the, who invented the first Christmas lights because before that they were hanging candles and that doesn't seem, (laughs) yeah, it doesn't sound, sound too smart. But after that it just took off and now we have Rockefeller, uh, center. We have Huntsville has a tree lighting at bridge street. Uh, it's an incredible tradition. I do it every year and it's the greatest thing in the world to just watch cats trying to destroy it every year. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Drew. That was very insightful. Very illuminating, I would say. Uh-huh. 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 I think Christmas lights are one of my favorite part of Christmas too, man. Just mm-hmm. looking at Christmas lights, man. Absolutely. How about this whole how about this whole like, oh well, you know, we're too cool for the old school, all white lights. You prefer the multicolor. Oh, I prefer the tacky traditional. the tackier the Christmas tree is, the awesomer. <laughs> and I mean like literal tacks. <laughs> so, that way, so that way when the cats get in the tree, yeah, they won't it's not do going it. Anywhere. They won't do it again. <laughs> So now we're going to get to the meat of the show. We're talking about our top five. This time it's going to be our top five Christmas ornaments. No, it's going to be our top five Christmas movies, of course. Part of pop culture is Christmas films, and, and I think we all have those Christmas films that we love or we traditionally watch or you know hit, hit somewhere on an emotional level. Um, so our top five Christmas movies. I'm going to start with uh, Drew, your number five favorite Christmas film. And, and just to clarify... Uh, I think these are going to be Christmas, but they don't have to necessarily be about Christmas, correct? I think we're going to talk about maybe the Christmas is the backdrop. If Christmas is the backdrop, if if, if as long as... If it's if, Christmas to you. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. My number five would be National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Great movie. Hilarious. Holy movie. shit, is it hilarious. <laughs> hilarious movie, but very heartwarming of just trying <laughs> to get this <laughs> get this time done with. <laughs> Robbie, your number five. Uh, my number five would be the Bill Murray classic... Of a Christmas Carol, an ad- adaptation of a Christmas oh, Carol. Yeah. Scrooged. Scrooged. Uh, I love Scrooged. I think it's funny. Just like like Drew said with uh, Christmas Vacation, it's funny. It's got memorable scenes, but it's got a really good meaning, a really good message about Christmas. And I really like it uh, all the way to the end of the movie where they're like, give a little bit of your heart. And that's what Christmas is to me, right? And I love it. Plus, the scene with the Grim Reaper scared the hell out of me when I was a kid. My favorite part was always the, it's a toaster. And she hits him with the, <laughs> he hits him with the toaster. <laughs> You're number five, Justin Goldsmith. Uh, Scrooge almost made my number five. And I'm going to give honorable mention to both the Santa Claus and Jack Frost with Michael Keaton. Because I like, <laughs> I like Michael both Keaton is the greatest actor of all time, I, just for the record. I, I like both those movies, but they didn't make the list. My he number couldn't five. Save that movie. <laughs> couldn't save it? No. Nah. It's a great movie, Ooh, kids. Well, we don't need to sit here and argue yeah, yeah, about okay. that movie, but yeah. I think it sucks too. But anyway, All right, well, yeah. my number five 
It's, <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> it's, a, it's a magical snowman. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my number five is Gremlins. Oh, Joe Dante. It's just that's classic. That's classic. Na, 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 na. Yeah, everything <laughs> everything about that movie is great. Down, it is, yeah, like, absolutely. Acting, the character, the story, it's all great. It's number five, great film. I'm gonna agree with uh, Gremlins, love it. But my number five is gonna ask, I'm gonna align with Drew on this and go with National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Mm-hmm. Something we watch every year. I think it's hilarious. Um, you're right; these are heartwarming moments, and it's just got those those lines you can repeat all year that get stuck in your head. <laughs> Shitter's full. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, Grace passed away 30 years ago. Like, certain, thing, certain things just get stuck in your head. Oh, and, and Randy Quaid is great in that movie. Oh, yeah. Regardless of what I think about his brother. Yeah. Wait a minute. Of, <laughs> Randy's his really funny in that movie. brother's the good one. I'm so confused. Now, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> our, number, our number four, number four, Drew. <laughs> a, a lot of people have grown to dislike this movie just because it's the, the 24 hours, but A Christmas Story. Yeah, that's I've why it got taken off mine the yeah. last few years. <laughs> because I don't know why TBS does it. They play for 24 hours straight. They just get rid of all the other things. And it's, it's like, their best ratings of the year. Yeah, I, was yeah. Like, I don't. <laughs> but uh, I have been there and being. I've been caught watching that movie all day long. And yeah, like, why? Like, I, I was just like my dad and I will just sit there for a few hours. Like, oh yeah, the the Red Rider. Oh yeah, the, oh, yeah. The, everybody's gonna watch that movie at least once during Christmas time. So Absolutely. TBS figures but they try from, to get everybody never from to do beginning it. to end. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> like in yeah. full. <laughs> yeah, but it just has all of these hilarious, th- hilarious things like <laughs> tongue getting stuck. The, the I can't put my arms down. <laughs> I love it, Robbie. Your number four. My number four is the Macaulay Culkin classic. Class what? Casket. Casket. <laughs> yeah, Home Alone. I love Home Alone. When I was a child, I loved that movie. I, I especially being a kid, having a kid go up against that, and just being alone. That was such the dream, yeah. right? You know, and then you grow older, and you're like, oh, alone, I'm alone. I heard they had a good, <laughs> but, I heard it had a good soundtrack. Yeah, that's what I heard, too. No, I love Home Alone. It's a great Christmas movie. It's got great music. It's got a good meaning and message. By the end of the film, fantastic performances. Joe Pesci, the other guy that, was the, narr- yeah, that was the narrator on <laughs> Wonder Years. Um, and, of course, Macaulay Culkin. That was a really good role for that kid. And I'm just going to say real quick that I, I love Home Alone 1. I do like Part 2. But I really feel like they really went a little unbelievable with the the traps that he set in part two. Uh, speaking of wet bandits, Goldsmith, <laughs> your number four. Were the sticky bandits? Not oh, sticky, <laughs> sticky, <laughs> wet, bandits. sticky wet bandits. bandits is something altogether <laughs> different. No, well, they were the wet bandits. We wanted first. to be the wet yeah. bandits. Uh, my number four, even though I hadn't seen it in a couple years, and you, I don't want anybody to think that I like it because of the main actor, because I liked it before then when I was a child and we saw it at school. The Christmas Carol, starring Patrick Stewart. It was a great one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just I need it. I need everybody to know that I don't like it just because it's Patrick Stewart. <laughs> but it's not hurting things. It's Patrick. Stewart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's a Christmas it's a Carol classic. is a great story. Yeah, yeah. It's the classic and probably the best acted one. Well, I would say the Scrooge McDuck one is the best <laughs> one, but and that gets to uh, me. I'm gonna go with number four being uh, 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 something that. Be, has become a Christmas classic more recently, and some people like the film, and some people don't dis- dislike the film. But it has one of the greatest alumni from SNL, Elf. Yeah, yeah. with Will Ferrell, man, I it's love that movie. movie. It's it's a good movie. It's it's got the heartwarming. Bob it's got Newhart's a great. It. Yeah. It's got a great cast. Yeah, it's got a phenomenal cast. So I love the film. I love the film. So that's my number four. And uh, let's go on to number three. Through, <laughs> Drew, Drew, Drew is number three. Three is number three. <laughs> oh, the Drew, the number three. Uh, one that I would uh, just have to mention is Home Alone, man. I, I, yeah. y- you got to talk about it just because <laughs> got to watch it every year. Mm-hmm. And Kevin McAllister is like, of, feature, of course, it, it was also great because my brother is Kevin, so we'd be like, hey, where's Kevin? God, God. <laughs> just uh, every year and my brother would be like oh uh, yeah thanks speaking of shape you robbie what's your number three my number three is the bat the cat and the penguin mm-hmm. batman returns i wondered if somebody was gonna put that great in there. christmas movie it's a great movie and it's a great christmas movie and i think tim burton has a really good eye for christmas oh yeah you know edward scissorhands is not necessarily a christmas movie but it's got a christmas part in it yeah and Night- it's a very whimsical movie nightmare before christmas yeah exactly but 
I love Batman Returns. It's it's my favorite Batman movie of the '90s. I don't think anybody can argue that. <laughs> I don't think anybody can argue it's the that. best interpretation of the Penguin period. But it is oh, a yeah. Christmas piece, and it has a nice sentimental Christmas sentiment at the end of it. <laughs> Which one of the greatest actors of all time, like we were speaking about before, yeah. apparently does a lot of Christmas movies, Michael yeah, Keaton. some of them bad, some of them good. <laughs> Never done anything bad. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of bad acting, <laughs> Justin oh, Goldson. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> what, is your, what is your number three, sir? My number three is Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Oh, Sorry, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. That is a Christmas movie. Is and a every movie. Shane Black movie a Christmas movie? Pretty much, almost. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> is Iron Man three is at Christmas? Iron Man too, three is it? at Christmas. What about his lethal weapons? One? Yeah, but Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is like one of, if not my, no, no it's my second favorite comedy behind Tropic Thunder. Hmm. But uh, it's it's got some of the best, some of my favorite actors in it: Robert Downey Jr., Val Kilmer. Who is the then, best Doc Holliday? <laughs> Better than Doc Holliday? <laughs> yes. Uh, and then uh, I forget, Michelle Monaghan. Monaghan, yeah. Monaghan, yeah. Uh, and then there's like all these other people that you know and recognize peppered throughout the whole movie, and it's it's hilarious, it's witty, it's funny. <laughs> and uh, I'll I'll jump in there. My number three uh, is a is a movie that Goldsmith already mentioned. It's Gremlins. Yeah. So maybe not be a, a Christmas a Christmas film per se. It's you know the Christmas is the backdrop, but it's a great film. It is a it's Christmas a movie. Film. Gizmo is his Christmas present. Yeah, yeah I, but mm-hmm. it's the gift that keeps on giving. When I think of traditional Christmas. I think of like <laughs> focused on. Christmas. This is a focus on gremlins who just happened to attack. They could attack during Easter. Number two, the deuce. <laughs> Speaking of deuces, Drew. <laughs> I love the deuces. Number two. Uh, <laughs> my uh, my uh, second favorite one would be Die Hard. And I have a saw again because of my father. I watched, had to watch it every year, and just John McClane's rampage through Nakatomi Plaza against the first Euro trash villain, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Rickman, and like, just the simple thing. It's like writes on the guy in blood. Ho ho ho! Now I have a machine gun. Robbie, you're number two. Uh, Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. Hey. It's fantastic. It's got you know, speaking of Christmas music. What's this? I think is a, is one of the greatest Christmas music songs, Christmas music songs, Christmas songs ever. I I, <laughs> I love Nightmare Before Christmas because it's cool because I love Halloween and Christmas is the second most wonderful. But it's mm. Christmas from a Halloween perspective. Yeah, it merges and I the love two it. for and, you. Yeah, and he represents an outsider. You know, and Tim Burton does that. All of his films are about outsiders. Um, Penguin and Catwoman and Batman are outsiders. Uh, in Batman, Batman Returns. should be in a book called The Outsiders. That would be good. Yeah, but who's the biggest outsider of Christmas except for the spirit of Halloween? And I, I just love the movie. I think it's cheerful. And once again, it's got that perfect ending, that perfect like Christmas morale, like all tied up into it. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Technically, wouldn't Easter be the opposite of Christmas? When Jesus died. <laughs> Sorry. Easter's <laughs> actually when he came back. Yeah. Okay. Just going to say that. Yeah. John. What do I know <laughs> about any of that stuff? Great pick, though. Great film. Great soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> for real, though. That. For real, though. Good movie. Good soundtrack. Right, thanks for your I love Tim Burton. Um, number two, Justin Goldsmith. Speaking of Tim Burton, <laughs> <laughs> Justin Goldsmith, not a very good segue. <laughs> What's your number uh, two? My number two, it was, it was very difficult for me to choose between my number two and number one, but my number two I decided on is Home Alone. Uh, as I said before, when I, I cannot think of Christmas without thinking of the music from home alone it's all so perfect the music uh, is probably the main reason but the story and everything's great too and the actors and we've already talked about it like 12 times my number two is a film we've already discussed and that would be batman returns of course how can i have a top five without squeezing michael keaton in there somewhere but i do love <laughs> batman returns put it's a great Fox. it's a great christmas movie we're not talking about <laughs> Jack Frost again. i would say it's better than jack frost and uh, i think batman returns is just it's just an all-around great flick Great cast, great music, love the movie. One more can be said. So now we're going to get to our number ones. Number one, I'm excited to hear what your your favorite all time Christmas movie is. And once you say this, it ha- you never fucking change it. You have to stick with this. You gotta take this to your grave. <laughs> so uh, I'm dying to know, Drew, your number one favorite Christmas movie of all time. Let's do a rundown real quick for the people just tuning in. I don't know how you would do this because it's a podcast, <laughs> not on the radio. Uh, your number five is going to be National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Hilarious. Number four is A Christmas Story. Eh. 
Number three. <laughs> number three is Home Alone. Number two is Die Hard. Who's your number one favorite Christmas movie of all fucking time? All fucking time. Number one, uh, you've all, you've all talked about the Christmas Carol, the Muppet Christmas Carol. Mm-hmm. You I wanna thought you were d- going to say the Mummy. Just no. <laughs> <laughs> the Mummy with Brendan Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Muppet Christmas Carol. You want to talk uh, Patrick Stewart as a good Ebenezer? Michael Caine, dude. Yeah, Michael Caine was is Ebenezer Scrooge to me. And then you have uh, Gonzo as Charles Dickens in the narrator. Uh, yeah, Kermit the Frog as Cratchit. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's hilarious, but uh, the glorious thing about the Muppets is that they can connect with you uh, just with Frank Oz's acting they have and a directing port on the backside of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Connect> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> literally. But I, I, I watch it every year, and Michael Caine's acting can just break your heart with Ebenezer, and I, I love it, man. Robbie, I'm dying to hear number one, but I'm going to run down these for the people just tuning in. <laughs> Number five was Scrooged with Bill Murray. Number four was Home Alone. Seems to make everybody's list. Number Except three. For yours. Number three. Well, we haven't got to my number one yet. Oh, oh spoilers! It's not on my. It's not. <laughs> <a> <laughs> <one>. <laughs> number three was one of the greatest films of all time, Batman Returns. <laughs> number two is Nightmare Before Christmas. I'd like to hear what your number one is, good sir. Dun 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 Gremlins. Gremlins is one of my favorite movies. You should have sang that song and then just give us a whole Yeah, actually. No, Gremlins is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's great. It's Christmas story. It is a Christmas story, and it is about Christmas because Gizmo is the gift, and he is the epitome of the gift that keeps on giving. And Oh, yeah. Love the movie. Super funny, super creepy. Joe Dante. Yeah. Perfect director. Chris Columbus wrote the script, produced by Steven Spielberg. Actually, when Columbus first wrote the script, it was a legit horror movie. Oh, I heard that. They had to yeah, tone like, it down a lot. Like You remember like when the, you first see the gremlins, and they're attacking Billy's mother, right? And they're playing the record, Do You See What I See? Yeah. And it gets stuck. In the original script, Billy comes home. That's on repeat. Do you see what I see? Yeah. Do you see what I see? And a gremlin shows up in full and kicks her head down the stairs. <laughs> it's a completely different movie, <laughs> but I love Gremlins. It's, it's like it, it makes number one on so many lists. Goldsmith, you're number one, and we'll give a rundown here real quick. <clears throat> number five was Gremlins. Apparently, not good enough for your number one. Great film though. <laughs> number four was the Christmas Carol movie with uh, Sir Patrick Stewart. Yep. Is he a Sir? Right, he was knighted, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. His number Twitter three, was Sir Pat Stew. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Number two was Home Alone. What's your number one? Ho, 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 Vern. <laughs> oh my God! Are you? Ernest scared? Saves Christmas is my number one favorite Christmas movie. I am so Since mad. Since right I was now. a child, I watched that I movie know every year. I don't let you back in the studio. <laughs> every year at Christmas, that's a great movie. Come on, it is. It is a fun film. I'm not going to knock the film. Number one, and it's got the best Santa Claus, better even than Richard Attenborough's in Miracle on 34th Street. Nah, the Santa Claus. It's the Sultan from Aladdin. Better than Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah. <laughs> He's not actually Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> it's so magical, and like I mean, most of the Christmas movies are. Uh, but I liked Ernest a lot as a kid. I, I watched all of his movies, but this one in particular had the most real movie making in it. <laughs> like it was, it was an actual, yeah, it, it, really, it was really the best good movie. Out of all. Yeah. yeah, and there was a budget and a script, way better yeah. than Ernest Scared Stupid. I mean, I still like that too. But I'm just saying, it's <laughs> yeah. way better. Yeah, yeah, it's a great film. Yeah, way. I watched it a lot in school. Growing up, I, I recommend everybody, whether you've seen it or not, just watch it this this year for Christmas. Get up there on your couch. It's on, on Netflix Eve. right now. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So uh, I'm about to get to my number one. Uh, if you don't recall, uh, my number five was Christmas Vacation. My number four was Elf. My number three was Gremlins. We all love Gremlins. My number two was Batman Returns. My number one, cliche as it is, my favorite Christmas film, and this one we grew up with, Live or Let Die. Is <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. It's, it's a wonderful life. Oh, it, Frank I think Capra. it's just yeah, Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. I yeah, love Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart. I love Jimmy Stewart. So this is a film that if I watched so many times as a kid, and my parents love it. My mom always watches it, even when she's seen it a thousand times. But she'll go out of her way when it's scheduled. She can buy it on Blu-ray, and she might already have it on Blu-ray or DVD or something. But she'll go out of her way when it's scheduled and watch it on TV commercials and all. So, but it's just something I, I love. And again, Jimmy Stewart, man. Jimmy yeah, yeah, Stewart. Jimmy Stewart, yeah. directed by Frank Capra, who did great movies like It Happened One Night and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Yeah, another movie with Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart. Stewart. Fantastic pick. 
All right, guys, we've been talking a lot about Christmas traditions and Christmas pop culture, but I want to know what Christmas means to you. This is our final thought. I appreciate everybody listening and being here, guys. Justin, what does Christmas mean to you? Uh, I'm a man. <laughs> it's like it. everybody come together and... Come together. All the lyrics from that song. Right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just, I mean, it's... The time, I mean, it's, Thanksgiving's kind of the same thing where it's about, you know, getting together and, you know, seeing old friends and family and stuff like that. But there's something different about Christmas. It's more, it's, it's more magical. Things like random acts of kindness from strangers and that, that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know. It's just, it is truly the most wonderful time of the year. Oh, Drew, thanks for being here. What does Christmas mean to you? It means family toward, because it's near the end of the year. It's like a celebration of we made it. We can relax. We love each other uh, and just have a nice time with each other because it's, nothing will bring like estranged. Like my my uh, brother and his wife live all the way in New York, so we barely get to see him. But if we do see him, it's always on Christmas. And I, I love that. I love that it can bring a family closer together. John, you're my homie. I appreciate you being here on the show that you host. What does Christmas mean to you, man? Christmas, it's it's the one night we all act a little nicer. We all smile a little easier. We all share a little more. For a couple hours, we are the people we always hope we would be. It's really a miracle because it happens every Christmas Eve. If you waste that miracle, you're going to burn for it. I know. <laughs> and who wrote that? That would be from Scrooge. That would be Bill Murray. Ah. And it goes on and on and on. But it's true, man. It's, you, you do feel more heartwarming and you want to go out of your way and hold the door for people and just be nice to people. And that's that Christmas spirit. It's not about the gifts yeah. and it's not about receiving things. Although I like getting toys and I like giving stuff. It's about that, that, you know, togetherness. To me, what does Christmas represent? Well, all that sun stuff that we talked about earlier. Okay. If you know what the sun represents throughout all of religion, it represents like the consciousness in yourself. Your absolute perfect, beautiful soul, right, is represented by the sun. The sun dies and it comes back. And the winter solstice, and that's where Christmas is. And it's about a reawakening of that perfect soul within you. So it is about gift giving and receiving, but mostly about the giving. The difference between Christmas and Thanksgiving to me, Justin, is that in thanks during Thanksgiving, we take the time to show gratitude for what we have, for what we have received. And then in turn, in Christmas, we now take our place and give to others and to the world. And to me, after a season of gratitude, now it's time to give. And Christmas to me, and I know it's like, it's odd, because people will be the nicest and the meanest at Christmas. Mm -hmm. They'll be the most courteous and, gr and, gr and, and gracious, but also the most douchey and just completely dipshittery. Complete dipshittery. Dip, complete dipshittery? <laughs> yeah, but it's about giving, and, and I love that. And that's what Christmas means to me. Plus all that sun shit. Yeah. That's yeah. deep, man. I love that sun <laughs> Thank shit. You. Yeah. Thank you. That's why we're philosophers. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of dipshittery, thank you for being here today, <laughs> Drew. Aw, <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> and thank you for joining us again, Goldsmith. Proud and happy to be here. And uh, I'm excited for next uh, the next podcast. We're actually going to talk about 70s movies. All right. That's right. We're, we're 2017, starting off strong with 70s movies. Yeah, we're going to be covering all Ooh. genres. Uh, it's going to be a hard top five. Drama, movie. comedy. Horror, yeah. musicals, uh, maybe mime movies. I don't know. We're covering everything. <laughs> Great directors worked in the 70s. Kubrick, yeah. Scott, Scorsese. Spielberg. Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> and his brother Spielberg. <laughs> yeah, his brother Spielberg. <laughs> I'm, I'm super excited. Justin will be yeah. here for that. Also, yep. I would believe Timothy is going to be back for that. Timothy was, Elephant? Timothy, uh, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Timothy Gorman, unfortunately, not Timothy <laughs> Elephant. No offense, Timothy. No, 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 like no offense, Timothy. Timothy. Yeah, Timothy was on the uh, Heist Movies podcast with us, but uh, super excited for that show, but it's going to be a difficult top five. Yeah, so join us next time. Same Santa channel, same channel. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do it. I can't even do it. it Thanks all this for joining nog. us, guys. Thanks it's for all, all this. this.